Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 5, Episodes 5 through 10. Yes, we binged again. They're shorter episodes. Don't judge. And since only 11 minutes apiece, we realistically only watched three full episodes. Using standardized episode length. And they just went by so fast and it's like we were both like so aren't there supposed to be like only five new episodes there actually were six so probably at the time we first looked into new steven universe episodes there were five but apparently now there were six or people went oh five through ten that's five episodes because ten minus five is five but when you count five six seven eight nine ten you end up with six and there were six Good episodes. I have no idea why Cartoon Network had such an issue with Rebecca Sugar. I don't know. I mean, this toned it back down. We had the huge thing with the trial and Lars and Homeworld. And we finished off the last set with Steven being back on Earth. And these were rather mild by comparison. Though, what we just mentioned is based on some rumors that I heard that Cartoon Network actually held off on releasing a bunch of new episodes of Steven Universe till they possibly couldn't hold them anymore because they wanted the show to go back to a light-hearted adventure with a young boy and his aunts, basically. And it pretty much never was that. Apparently Cartoon Network wasn't looking the past four seasons. Yeah, they wanted to go back to a really, really happy-go-lucky because we already have a serious adventure with Adventure Time. I don't see anything wrong with this show, Cartoon Network. If it found a different audience than you were expecting, let it find this different audience. Because you want people to watch your stuff, right? If you're worried about a different demographic than the one you were targeting, find out the new demographic that's watching your show, then change the advertisers. That's all you have to do, because that's what they really have issue with, is we were marketing this show to little girls. We can't sell those ads anymore. In that case, sell ads for teenage boys who are watching your show. I mean, really, I did not get some of the ads that Cartoon Network put up for us while we were watching legally through the Cartoon Network app. Thomas the Tank Engine? I'm pretty sure that no one who is watching Steven Universe is probably still watching that post-apocalyptic horror known as Thomas the Tank Engine. We're not even kidding on that. Go back and look at some of the early material. Ah. Uh... Back to Steven Universe and these wonderful episodes. Let's see if we can't do this chronologically. <laughs> I don't know if I have the memory for it. That's asking a lot because they kind of flow together. Yeah, but they flow together so much that Ember was like, how did they get back to Earth? Well, you remember Lars's head? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the whole thing with how the diamonds overreacted seemed like such a season finale. It's like, wait a minute, we're back on Earth? Oh yeah, we were back on Earth because we did more stuff. And they do such a great job with reactions in this show. How characters react to events. Like how worried Pearl and everyone else was when Steven went out of the house just to go, I need to walk Connie home. I'll be fine. I won't get abducted again. And how Connie felt betrayed at what Steven did. And hurt, and how Steven didn't understand, and how Steven eventually understands that he's like, oh great, I was an idiot. How do I fix this? Which, pretty much, if you're a good person, your reaction to any situation like this, oh shoot, I messed up, how do I fix it? How do I say I'm sorry? In a sincere and truthful way that they will believe that I truly am sorry because I wasn't getting it at first. Trust me, I have been through that experience myself. It's really hard. But back to Steven. I love how this show also sets up the classic of the character learning the lesson from the exact same thing happening to them later. Also, I like Mayor Dewey a little bit more. Well, I like how they called that episode Dewey Wins. Most people wouldn't count that as a win. But he came to a realization that, hmm, this woman would make a good mayor. Let's let the town have that and I can stop being so stressed out. Because, realistically, I would be a terrible mayor in this situation, because I was a terrible mayor. I'd literally do nothing. Hmm. Also, his Secret Service wannabes are terrible, too, because they didn't even bother to jump in front of him back when he was getting shot with t-shirts. Yes, and they didn't really do anything about that tomato, either. Nope. Also, who was filming from that angle? 
Because it was a side angle. Good question. Who was off to the side? Specifically with the angle, it was one. Of, it was the right-handed guard, the Secret Service agent, because that's the only way you could have gotten that angle. What about Onion? I don't remember seeing Onion in the crowd. Could be Onion. Probably was Onion. I mean, he's Onion. He's everywhere. He's even running his own Onion stand. I was wondering when they were going to use that pun. Yeah, Onions, Onions. I also love how Steven was like, hey, isn't that my hat? <laughs> Because apparently Onion is also a klepto. Yeah. He is a strange little boy, but with a good heart. Yeah, I'm just, I want more story on how Onion became Onion. Because I feel like we know a lot more about sour cream than we do about Onion, even though we had a whole episode of Onion hanging out with his seasonal friends. Though that does trigger the memory of we have gotten some character development for, what's the PGS way to say that that guy's a bit of a jerk? Though he is getting character development. He may be staying a jerk, but he is changing. He is reacting to his environment. We also found out some, a little bit more backstory on him. That he may have been involved with a girl at one point and completed it up. I can see how. Very likely. The question is how did he get a girl in the first place? Or was he not Kevin before this? And it was his overreaction to become Kevin. And he actually, if you think about it, he still got... His memorable party? Because Lion jumped through a portal in the middle of the pool. Yes, after walking on water. Let's not skip that part. Lion was walking on water. He's done that on multiple occasions. But yes, that is very important for that particular thing because everyone's like, whoa. Though that brings up the question, can Lars now walk on water? Is there enough water on Homeworld for us to find out? Hmm. Because gems don't ingest nutrients. They get all of their energy from their gems. That's why the kindergartens use up so much resources. And that brings up them trying to grow crops. Well, then they pick the worst crop for that condition. <laughs> Sunflowers may be robust plants, but in that particular environment, they can't grow. They can't sustain. Another thing I noticed is I have a feeling that if they brought a lot of plant material there and put mulch and everything and spread it out, you could eventually grow stuff there. Because what that told me, what happened to the plants, told me that the ground sucked all the nutrients out of the plants. That or that gym creature Ooh, did. That's a good point. Because also... that's what I thought. Because I'm like, well, then how is that one plant thriving? So I thought that it must have sucked up the nutrients from the sunflowers. I noticed that the plants didn't quite look completely like it was just them being drained that got rid of them. They actually looked like they were stomped on. So maybe that guy came through again and put himself back on the ground. And Lapis is still so scared and she doesn't want to get involved because especially since the last time she got involved in anything way back when her gym was cracked and she was trapped in a mirror for like a thousand years. Yes. And when she escaped and got her gym healed and went back to homeworld, she was captured. And then after escaping that, she fused with Jasper and spent all her time trying to control Jasper. So she's been burned a lot. Do I have a feeling she's going to be one of those people coming back to the scene the last moment to either save things or make things more complicated? Because Lapis does care. She's just afraid. And if you get a point where the caring overrides the fear, she will be there. So it was kind of rough for her to take absolutely everything. I think it's because eventually she wanted to, and to her, that's what she really cares about. But I have a feeling that she's going to spend enough time there alone on her own that she's going to realize that it's not this that was important. It was what I left behind. Well, also part of it was that Peridot kept using things from the barn to try to say why they couldn't leave. So once Lapis was able to pick up the entire property and all of their possessions, then Peridot ran out of excuses. That's one of the really good things about the show is the characterization of the characters. They do a really good job of making these characters feel like real people. They're extremely complicated. They do stupid things. They make mistakes and they don't always get the result they want. Peridot, for instance, expected after I dumped all my feelings, why didn't I get a reward for that? Yeah, because the stereotypical trope is, 
I explain my feelings on why I don't want to leave and don't you want to stay, and Lapis still left. It shows that they're both real characters, because in real life that oh isn't always happens, because the person sometimes just needs to leave and be by themselves for a little bit, and get together their own thoughts, and get together themselves, because Lapis, even though her gym is healed, is still very broken. She's done a lot of healing, and she probably won't ever be whole, but she's come a long way. I mean, just think about all that mental trauma. They live for, like, ever. And she spent how long trapped in a mirror? And then she barely got out, and she was captured. And then she escapes, and it, I know I said all of this before, but and then is technically captured again by fusing with Jasper and trying to control Jasper. It's just amazing the depth these characters have. I mean, even the shallowest characters get depth on this show. Mayor Dewey. That jerk. Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Just to clarify, yes, Kevin. <laughs> just everyone's getting depth. I mean... Even the silliest side characters, like, I can't remember his name right now, but he was texting Steven like crazy. Now I want to watch that panda show. Koala. Koala, Koala Princess. I, I want to watch that now. It <laughs> seems interesting. And that would be Ronaldo. Thank you. You're welcome. I love that we didn't get to hear all the text messages read out loud and full. You had to read really fast, like, oh, yeah, uh, so when you... Still didn't answer me. I figured you must have been abducted. So I went to your house and then after I broke one of your windows, I found the note. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you are a fast reader. <laughs> and there was still even more after that. That was as far as I got. Uh, need to watch those again and hit pause. The thing is the creators of this show leave in there for us. They're not really clues or anything like Gravity Falls, but they're nice little details. That really adds a lot of volume to the story. I mean, they crammed a lot into six 11-minute episodes. Yes, because we have Peridot and Lapis dealing with the fact of, wait, you went to Homeworld? You went on trial in front of Blue Diamond? Though apparently Lapis was more freaked out about Blue Diamond than Yellow Diamond. Yellow Diamond seems more dangerous. Blue Diamond seems... a more sympathetic character, but it may just be her grieving. But if Lapis originally belonged to Blue Diamond... By her coloring, I suspect she did. Also, did you notice that Pearl couldn't say anything about the diamonds? She physically could not say anything about the diamonds. Yeah, that was interesting. And what do you mean by Lapis's coloring? Because... She's very close in shades of blue to Blue Diamond. So she most likely belongs in Blue Diamond's court. The well, colorings usually match the diamonds. Well, then how do you explain Peridot? She's a lot of yellow and green, which matches Yellow Diamond, which is the court she belonged to. But during the trial, Stephen's lawyer specifically says, where were Pink Diamond's sapphires to warn her? Where were her ruby guards? Hmm, that's a good point. But usually the coloring seems to match the diamond in some way. Like the pearls match the diamonds. So perhaps clothing design, because it's definitely not gem color, because Jasper belonged to Pink Diamond. But she also switched. And she has very red tones in her outfit. Hmm. So yeah, Lapis probably belongs in her court. Just something about her says that she belonged in Blue Diamond's court at one point. Especially since she was more freaked about Blue Diamond than Yellow Diamond. Mm-hmm. And she may actually know how evil... Blue Diamond is because she does seem to be the more sympathetic one, which could be a great way to lead us off the trail and then suddenly shwack! Well, Blue Diamond has been in grieving for Pink Diamond. Lapis was imprisoned in the mirror way before that. So she has no very limited knowledge of modern gym. Politics? Mm hmm. Ah, so what were your favorite points? What were your favorite nitpicks? Any particular points you want to go over? Well, it just felt. Ah, the well, we still had, you know, story progression. There was a lot of come down. It's like, shouldn't we be trying to get back to Homeworld to rescue Lars? I mean, he's kind of okay because he's with other escapees and apparently doesn't need to eat anymore, but he still doesn't belong on Homeworld. And Stephen doesn't seem too terribly torn up about that. And 
everyone else seems to be because Sadie lost it when Stephen told her, and then Sadie went with Stephen to tell Lars's parents. That your son's alive. Kind of. He's pink. Also, he's on another planet. And we'll work on getting him back eventually. Also, is that donut shop now closed? Because the only employee has now quit. Because I was kind of like, good for Sadie because the job was draining her so insanely. But now that she feels better and she's so excited about the music, will she still be able to sing like she did when they were all watching the movie in her basement? Hmm. Because she's going to be so much happier. She's going to be more peppy like when she was singing that one song that Steven tried to get her to do at the talent show. But she did an amazing job with that whole working dead thing. I've had jobs like that. I should say a job like that for six years. Mine was five. So much fun. May I take your order? Is there anything I can help you find? <laughs> uh, once again, it's just the characters. And that whole thing with Sadie and the singing and the, oof, that song. Stupid Universe started out with some okay songs, but every song after that has gotten better and better and better. You know, these newer ones are really things I can imagine hearing on the radio. So any nitpicks, you know, anything you found really like, well, that is odd. Well, knowing how much the Watermelon People's Society has advanced over time, I do have to wonder how intelligent Pumpkin is, because Pumpkin understood that they were leaving, yet at the same time Pumpkin is more of a pet. So how intelligent is Pumpkin? I think Pumpkin is pretty intelligent, especially if you think about it. In his situation, being a pet is the best for him because he's getting a lot of attention and probably gets taken care of very well. So if you think about it, that's a good setup for him. Yes, yes. You think about the movie Good Boy, that dogs theoretically are trying to prove how they're in charge. They're not, but they're trying to pass that off when somebody comes to check up on them. Mm. Go, well, look at all of this. Look at how well we're taken care of. See that? We're in charge. When truthfully, it's the cats. Yeah, yeah. They didn't really bring that up in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Cats rule everything. If you have a cat, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've had several. I've also had cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. And then, you know, Pumpkin allowing, didn't really allow, but allowing herself to be found. Just this show. <laughs> I enjoy watching it so much. I was like, why did Sadie want to hide all of those movies? Because she found them embarrassing. And she was probably watching them a lot to grieve. Especially since she said she didn't have time to grieve. Yes, but the thing was she also said that she was still doing the same amount of work. Because she's used to doing Lars's work. So it was that she was doing all the work alone. Also, who really runs the donut shop? Who's hiring these people? Who hired these two? Yeah, who owns it? Because we know Fish Stew Pizza is a family business. But who owns the big donut? Who hired Donut Boy and Donut Girl? Where do the donut deliveries come from? Because for a while, you know, they were all shipped in until the falling up episode where Sadie teased with the, you can have the first fresh baked one. We're going back to having fresh baked donuts. Yeah, it just makes me question. like, so who in this town? Wait a minute. I just realized something. <laughs> I think Mayor Dewey is going to be working at the donut shop. Probably because he walked off and said he needed to find a job, and the donut shop now has no employees. But who's there to hire him? I know, but that just hit me. It's like, he said he's going to be looking for a job. What's the one place that's open for new jobs? <laughs> the donut shop. Yes. Well, we get to find out who actually owns and hires people now? I doubt it, because when we saw Greg go to the car wash place, he just grabbed the help wanted sign and walked inside. But that was part of a flashback. Hmm. Also, apparently, Greg has about nine mil left. Apparently. Also, something else just struck me. I wonder if it's the guy who owns the arcade. Mr. Smiley? Yeah, he seems to own a lot of small things around there. He may actually own the donut shop. Well, he seems to own, like, the entirety of the boardwalk. So it could be him, though he may not be smiling right now. And I want more of that backstory between him and Mr. Frowny. Yes, please. Not just more of the backstory, but more of those two characters interacting. 
It's going to be really interesting as if Mr. Frowny is one of the key things that helped stop the gym invasion. What is this thing? It makes me feel so depressed and I, I don't feel motivated anymore. Why were we attacking this planet again? <laughs> Funny. That reminds me of this one scene in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where this depressed robot gets a hold of this gun that shows your emotions with other people, forcing them to feel it. Ouch, 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 ouch. And he got to hold of the gun. It was the end of the movie. That's how he defeated the villains. He shot them with the gun while he was holding it, so his emotions got projected onto them, and they felt, I'm so depressed. I don't feel like doing this anymore. Yes, because it was designed and made so intelligent that there really wasn't any other emotional path because there was such a huge amount of information that any good could be immediately countered by the information it had. That's another movie I liked. I've never read the books. Yes, I lose a point off my geek card. You lose several. I at least have read the first two and made it halfway through Restaurant at the End of the Universe. Problem was, I had all of it as an ultimate collection, so by that point I felt like I was reading an encyclopedia. Uh, eventually I'll find a good audiobook version of it and then I can listen to at least the first one. Because I've seen the first movie, which from what I understand was actually written by the author. Turned into a movie by the author, so that means it's probably pretty good in my book should specifically say which edition because there's more than one version of the movie. You mean the one that came out several years ago? Yeah, I mean the most recent one they made. I have an older one. Ah, so anything else you want to go over or should we start wrapping this boy up? <laughs> well, we skimmed a little on the whole vacation place of them trying to get the information out of Steven and all being so far off the mark of what the problem actually was. Hmm. And that's how we found out that Pearl couldn't actually physically say anything about the diamonds. Which is interesting. It kind of makes sense. Because if the pearls are supposed to keep secrets, making it so they physically can't say the secrets after they learned them is a smart thing to implement. It was just really interesting. Also, how was Garnet so far off the mark? That's what I was trying to figure out. I was like, she has future vision. Can't she see that what she's saying is off the mark? Yeah, or was there like a two and three chance that she was right? Because what we've seen from when it gets alone to Steven is that she usually gets three variances. Mm. If how it works when it's alone to Steven is the same way that it works for Garnet. Mm. Also her scripted, yes, Steven, you should do this. Turn to Steven, you should go. It was more enthusiasm. Steven, you should go. Thumbs up. All right, got it. <laughs> Nailed it. And Amethyst was almost starting to get somewhere with Steven, and then they kind of tangented. Because she's like, you know, it's okay if it's not okay. But Steven sidetracked her with going, the sky? And she kind of got lost at that point. Well, Amethyst is still learning. Yes, well, she's the youngest, barring Steven. I do like that she got angry at Peridot when she's like, I'm trying to help you. Why are you getting angry at me? Because I'm trying to help you. And it seemed to be working at the time. Also, the return of Smoky Quartz. Which was awesome. I almost thought that Steven and Connie might fuse when they had their makeup hug. I was really hoping they wouldn't because I'm like, don't give Kevin the satisfaction. The way that happened, I was like, I know we're probably not going to get them to fuse, but they're still going to do something that will completely ruin his night, especially when he, especially with the way he introduced it. I love his mic drop. Those are expensive. <laughs> Oh, well, my favorite things about these episodes were just the characterization of all the characters. They just keep nailing that. They just keep nailing the interactions. It's one of the reasons this show does so well is because people can connect with it so easily because these characters feel so human, even though they're so alien. That's the craziest thing. All the real connected and grounded characters are the ones who are physically alien. Except for key people, like Sandy, Lars, and Steven's dad, Greg. Just all these people that he interacts with the most are the most grounded, and the people that he's kind of vaguely interacted with over time have gotten more grounded. But the aliens are the most human. Well, I remember E.E. E. Knight saying that at the base, when you strip off all the special features, there's just a few basic stories out there. So his Age of Fire novels 
okay, yeah, they're about dragons and dealing with different avenues of interacting with humans. No, you take all that away, it's a coming of age story. So whatever trappings you put over a story, the core elements are still there. And it's just all of that's what makes me really love Steven Universe and continues to make me really want to watch more of this show. I really enjoyed these episodes. Truly my only letdown was like, Lars is still on Homeworld. Isn't that supposed to be a little more of a priority? Just because he was kind of safe at the moment doesn't change the fact that he's hiding with a band of refugees who, if found, will be shattered. And who knows what they'll figure out to do to Lars. They're not used to dealing with organic creatures to torture. So, because, mm. you know, the gym destabilizer doesn't work on them. Nope. Because Lion seems to be pretty dang sturdy when it comes to fighting other gems. And a lot of what we've seen in gem tech seems to be designed specifically to take out other gems, which is odd, considering Homeworld's control and reach and rule by the diamonds. You would think more of the weapons would be to take out non-gem life forms that they've run across over the generations and all the galaxies that they've taken over and destroyed. Though they don't seem to consider any other life form other than them any kind of real threat. Because to them, they are just so far advanced, everything else is literally animals. You can just step on those. It's okay. Yes, but animals can still be very dangerous, and you should still have ways to deal with them. Well, if you look at their weapons, usually, except for the destabilizer and stuff like that, the weapons they primarily use seem to work very well on organics. Spears, knives, general sharp things. Yes, the traditional weapons, but I'm saying the high-tech weapons seem more geared towards gems. Well, they were probably developed during the gem war. You know, what you need to fight your enemy is usually what you work on. Yeah. How true. Yep, because really good episodes. Like I said, I just thought that getting Lars back would be more of an immediate priority once Steven made it back to Earth. Hmm. But it looks like we needed more character development and more setup on Earth before we went back to Lars. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 5, Episodes 5 through 10. Thanks again for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share, comment, watch other videos. If you haven't seen our other Steven Universe videos, you could go back and watch those. We have several, because the show's been on for a bit. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, the Mastodon servers, Reddit when he remembers, and wherever else we can find on the internet to stick it in a corner and go, Hey, look at this! Shine a spotlight. Isn't it pretty? Really enjoy Lux's art and would like some of your own? Check his commission page for pricing and availability. Don't have anything specific in mind, but uh, willing to part with a dollar or three? We have both a Patreon and a coffee. Patreon starts at a dollar, which includes access to monthly sketches and voting rights. And coffee is a single donation kind of like a tip, that works in increments of three. Thanks again for listening.